Hey guys, it's Christy with Zen 10 Lotus Tarot, and I just want to come to you really quick with the video. Um, I decided to do today a 5D conversation between the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine um, to see where you guys are at um, if you had a conversation. Um, sometimes when twin flames are not in union, um, they only speak on the 5D, which is like in their dream state or in um, a meditation state or um, telepathically, you know. We send each other little messages through music and things like that. So um, so today I thought that we would do a reading between the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine with things that they would like to say to one another. So I'm going to use this side for our Divine Masculine and this side for our Divine Feminine. And the thing that you have to remember is that energy is fluid. So um, the person who is the divine masculine may ask, actually be in their masculine feminine energy. So they could be the, you get what I'm saying. Either way, they're interchangeable. <laughs> um, whoever is the divine masculine, you know, he's going to be here. The divine feminine is going to be here. Energies are fluid. They, um, it can be male male. It can be female female. It can be uh, male female. Whatever it is, and the male can actually be embodying his female energy. <laughs> Likewise, the female could be embodying embodying her masculine energy. So that's how that gets confusing. But you know, take it as it resonates. And if it doesn't, then throw her out the window. But um. I'm just going to throw down what the Divine Masculine would like to say to the Divine Feminine and what the Divine Feminine would like to say to the Divine Masculine. And then we'll throw down some mutual energies and where they're at on their journey um, to finish it off. And I'm going to just take a little sip of my Diet Coke <laughs> just for fun. Okay. So, um, this is super fun. I've never done reading like this. <laughs> And I just thought her up in my little brain today and thought, what the heck, you know? So, um, okay, we'll get started. I got some message cards, and then I also got, um, we'll throw down some music, since they do like to um, communicate through music, and we'll finish it off with some naughty and nice messages, because... I still have those from Christmas, but whatever, I just threw them in a bowl, and now they're all mixed together, so we don't know if we're going to get naughty or nice. That ought to be exciting. No. Okay, our first message from the Divine Masculine to the Divine Feminine. <laughs> oh, there's a few. A couple came out. Um, the first message from the Divine Masculine to the divine, divine Feminine is, Our sex is bliss, electric, fire, synergy, ecstasy. I am afraid of getting hurt, but I'm willing to crash and burn for you. I am working through my addictions. Will you wait for me? Every time I open up, you reject me or run away. So now I'm afraid to say anything. I could look into your eyes for the rest of my life. Okay, now we'll see what the Divine Feminine has to say. <laughs> You got sex that's electric? What the heck? I'm jelly. I haven't I haven't listened to that song since that night. It would tear me to pieces.
and somebody don't want to talk. <laughs> Divine Feminine, you don't want to talk? What? You don't want to hear? What, what do you got to say? Come on. Give it up. We're waiting. I can't believe this. Nothing. You got nothing? Come on. That's too many. I'm sorry, yo. <laughs> I don't know. Whoever this is has a throat chakra issue. They don't want to talk. Here's one sticking out. I have a problem with choosing people who are not good for me. I admire you from afar. My heart is safer that way. so crazy because it seems like, um, I don't know, we'll wait and see. <laughs> I won't say that yet. Come on, give me a clipper. Oh, there we go. Oh, there's some messages. Okay. It was easier for me to choose the third party. I want you to look at me like you do, with sparkles in your eyes, like I'm the only one in the room. Oh. Oh, blank. <laughs> Please come home to me. I somehow feel home when I'm with you. Can we start over? I want you to be happy even that, that if that happiness doesn't include me. Some days I feel like a fool. Other days I feel like a queen or king. What is the truth? Let's get a couple more from the Divine Masculine to the Divine Feminine. I secretly love to be possessed by you. <laughs> that is a little hot. To be possessed by someone. A little toxic. A little toxic. Not going to lie, but you know. We all have devils in us, right? Some people like to be possessed. I'm just saying. <laughs> Makes people feel safe in a weird way. I don't know. One more at least. I'm addicted to you and that scares me. So somebody's addicted. Divine Masculine is addicted to the Divine Feminine. 
or the Divine Feminine could be the, the Divine Masculine. Interchangeable, fluid. One could be embodying the other energy, so take it as it resonates. Um, but somebody secretly likes to be possessed by the other one, and one secretly is addicted and it scares them. So I'm going to get some clarification cards on some of these messages, just to see um, exactly what comes out. Our sex is bliss, electric, fire, synergy, ecstasy. And we want a clarification. The emperor wanting to take charge, wanting to come get that sex, you know, that electricity, that synergy. Ooh, and that would be just as served, by the way. <laughs> I am addicted to you, and that scares me. The Four of Cups. Yeah. It's like, um, there's a fear of rejection, for sure. And I think that's fact, actually on both sides. <clears throat> Somebody feels like they've already opened up in some way and was rejected. And so, whoever was rejected in the past and um, expressed their feelings... Um, every time I open up, you reject or run away from me. So now I'm afraid to say anything. Yeah, there's definite fear of rejection. But somebody wants to take charge and come get that sex, you know? Spiritual sex, not like it. Yeah, the Seven of Swords, like wearing a false mask, not saying anything. Um, even when... Uh, even when it's felt, it's not said. And not that it has to be said. It's just that um, that's what's keeping the two apart. Yeah. You're manifesting. You know what you want. You know what you don't want. And you're manifesting your counterpart. You both are manifesting each other. But it's like when there's no communication about it. Nobody knows what the other one is feeling or thinking or whatever some it seems like there may be a little bit of feelings of not um not wanting to be the only one <laughs> like there's that feeling of rejection like um if i say something and i'm rejected again i may fall to pieces and then the other one saying like some days i feel like i'm a fool but then other days you make me feel like i'm like your king or queen so i i'm not sure what is the truth you know so there's that lack of communication in order for you two to come together. And it's like, um, fear of rejection can come from ego, but um, it can come from a heart space. You know, if you've been rejected in the past by this person, one of you, um, then of course that's going to be coming from not only an ego space, but a heart space. Like my heart can't take it if I'm rejected again. So I can't be the one that says anything. You know what I mean? It has to come from whoever wasn't rejected, you know, in the past because they just, um, yeah. But I think they're okay. Like, they're okay to hear rejection. They're okay to say, you know, like, if, if I... If this person never says it to me, you know, if this person never comes forward and lets me know that they love me as much as I love them, then it's okay because I want them to be happy even if that doesn't include me. You know what I mean? Like, um, and twin flames don't always come together. You know, they're put on our path for a purpose. And most of the time it deals with um, growth and learning and evolution and, you know, putting you on your actual divine path. Because the twin flame connection is a divine connection between two, you know, one soul that's split in two. And the purpose of their contract is to come back together to find one another in this lifetime, right? Or in many lifetimes, you know, and to um, fulfill the contract of what is their mission um, in this lifetime. 
And so um, twin flames don't always have to be romantic either. You know, like sometimes that's not exactly what it is. I don't know. I don't know. Sex is ecstasy though. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? But, um, but that's not, it doesn't always have to be that purpose. You know, maybe that's the initial... Um, I don't know. Maybe that's what the initial attraction was or that it was um, somehow, and maybe that wasn't the initial thing. Maybe it was friendship. Maybe it was, um, and it's turning into something more. Or maybe it was um, something more and now it's just friendship. Like whatever your story is, you know, obviously take it as it resonates. It sounds like there's a little bit more romantic feelings in this connection, this twin, twin flame connection that I'm channeling, um, just based on the storyline. Let's throw out a couple more cards. Let's see. Some days I feel like a fool, other days I feel like a queen king. What is the truth? Let's see what that is. What is that? Yeah, the Knave of Swords in reverse. So that's like, um, it's like there's delays, you know, in knowing the truth. And sometimes that can be anything from self-sabotaging behaviors to um, overthinking to, um, you know, not being able to make a decision for whatever reason. But there's delays. That's um, bad news, you know, delays in the situation. And um, bottom of the deck is the Eight of Swords stuck in their head. You know, someone's stuck in their head and overthinking the situation because maybe they're just not sure what is the truth. Does this person love me or they don't love me? Is this my person or is it not my person? Am I the only one creating this in my mind or is it real, you know? And so... Um, yeah, there's delays in this and communication altogether. Um, I want you to look at me like you do, with sparkles in your eyes, like I'm the only one in the room. Clarify that. You want a reconciliation, you know, or they do. And they want to come rushing in, you know, like they're the, um, like on their knight in shining armor on their white horse, you know, and come and tell you how they feel. And um, that's, that's the Knight of Cups energy. And, um, but they're almost like, it's like they're, feeling down about something that there's nothing to feel down about. It's like they're, they've already in their mind, like, it's like, they're like, uh, I don't know, like, I don't know if this is like over or it's not over or if it ever was a thing. Like, I'm just not sure what to think about it. I'm a little bit um, distracted right now. I got a lot of shit going on. And so, I mean, I just have to, I don't know, just like, Kind of worry about it but then sometimes I don't you know what I mean it's kind of like an energy of like I don't know I just don't know what's gonna happen you know and spirit is saying like you know there's four cups still full that you're not noticing that's the four of swords energy is that you know there's things that you're feeling like meh about in this connection that um, you're not even noticing the four cups that are still full of all kinds of good things, you know, um, yeah, you're waiting, somebody's waiting, um, for their happiness, and they're worried that it's a delusion, you know, that it's something that they've created in their mind, like, um, that it's something that is one-sided, or just a fantasy, 
you know, but they daydream about it. They think about it a lot. Um, the divine timing is at play in this connection, which means that, um, you know, there's some healing. There was the, um, I'm addicted to you, and then there's also, I am working on through my addictions, will you wait for me? And so that's another energy of healing. So there's some healing that needs to take place in your connection at this time. And um, although you both are separate at this time, you're both thinking about each other, but it seems like there needs to be some sort of like dialogue between you, but it seems like you're both scared to do that. So nobody's saying anything. Um, Let's get, you can see this is um, the high priestess at the bottom of the deck is um, an energy of like secretive, secretive nature, you know, trying to use your intuition, but um, you feel like things are hidden, like you just don't know what the other one is thinking. So nobody says anything because they're afraid, um, afraid of getting hurt, afraid of um, being rejected. Afraid to say anything for sure. Um, so let's see what would the divine masculine like to say to the divine feminine if he could say anything at all without fear, without ego, and coming from the heart space. What are the give me at least three going forward? What would the Divine Masculine like to say to the Divine Feminine coming from a heart space? Even if that's from the 5D, even if it's not Mercury D yet. Nothing feels worse than the thought of you with someone else, anyone else. I see repeating numbers and think of you. I never felt so excited than the times we spent together. You light me up. We have so many plans. I can't wait to go on adventures with you. I am willing to cut out anyone or anything that tries to stop us. Are you? at the bottom of the deck you are so beautiful when you smile at me and what would the divine feminine like to say in response to those from her heart space without any distractions without any ego attached the divine feminine like to say to the divine masculine from a heart space with no ego attached nothing stopping no distractions um if you could say anything and be safe and just be safe you know because that's what keeps us from saying stuff in the first place right so we're afraid that we're not safe As much as I would love to wait for you to figure this out, to heal, I have to end this cycle. I love you. I thank you. I forgive you. I'm sorry. 
There are things I could tell you that would blow your mind about how divinely guided we are to be together, but I'm not sure you're ready. Is this just a fantasy that I alone created? It feels like a dream. I am afraid your family and friends don't approve. I wish they knew how much I love you. There is so much interference in our connection, I don't know what to do. I'm afraid your family and friends don't approve. I wish they knew how much I love you. Yeah. It's like... It's like your divine feminine wants to come rushing in and fight for you, right? Um, or fight for this connection. But first off, she's definitely afraid that she's created this fantasy in her mind, right? Um, but it's like maybe friends, family, um, people are interfering in the connection that that um, wouldn't approve of this connection for some reason. It could be plenty of reasons, like religious backgrounds, um, you know, um, large age gaps, um, same sex, um, you know, just lots of reasons that people are super incapable of not being judgy for whatever reason. And so we allow people to keep us in the box of judgment, you know, their judgment when God's the only one that can judge us. You know what I'm saying? But like, um, but it's, but it happens, you know, and that keeps us in a space of trying to stay in the box to please others. And so, so your person would love to come rushing in and, you know, be like, you're mine. <laughs> you know what I mean? But like at the same time, they don't know if they've created this like a fantasy in their brain. <laughs> um, sometimes it feels like a dream. Um, they want to wait for you to figure it out and to fight for it too. But it's like they know in order to heal that you need time and they need time. Um... But in order for them to completely heal, they have to end a cycle, you know? It's like either we're going to do this or we're not. And if it's not, you know, we can't rush divine timing for sure. But, like, there is a um, certain change that has to occur. That's a little bit of, like, not letting go completely, but just moving forward. Um, you know, taking um, steps in a direction of moving forward. Um maybe trying to date other people, maybe trying to move on, you know what I mean? And um, the, uh, the prayer that's attached to this is, it's, I love you, I thank you, I forgive you, I'm sorry. And it's the Hawaiian prayer for peace, um, which I think is a beautiful little prayer. And we can say it to ourselves, like, I say it to myself when I'm anxious, and um, so it's uh, it's soothing. It brings peace, inner peace, peace to this connection. You know, I love you. I thank you. I forgive you, and I'm sorry. Like I'm sorry, it didn't work out. You know, I'm sorry that we're not ready. Um, I thank you for everything that you've taught me. I love you. That will never change, you know? It's unconditional love. Um, yeah. So it's like um, your person is to the point where they're like, you know, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Is this just something I created in my head? Am I alone in this connection? I mean, it doesn't feel like you're alone. It just feels like there's a lot of um, anxiety on both of your parts about rejection, you know? Somebody may have been rejected in the past. That person feels like they can't come forward with their feelings. Um, one person feels like they've created it in their mind. 
there's some interference. There are things I could tell you that would blow your mind about how divinely guided we are to be together, but I'm not sure you're ready. What is that? Spirit? swords you know king of swords is somebody who speaks the truth it's like um there's a lot of truths in this there's a lot of communication that needs to be had between you and your person there's so much unsaid and that sometimes is the hardest thing you know when it's like there's so much more to say but um nobody's saying it and, and you don't know how to break that silence without um in a safe space, you know, <laughs> like, um, it's like, but that's the only thing that's holding you back from living from your heart space is opening it up, you know, like you're, you both feel like you're still somewhat in your ego. And even sometimes when we think that we're not coming from that ego space, it's like, um, old behavior patterns come out and sneak up on us without us realizing it. You know, the self-sabotaging behaviors, the um, things that we, when we feel that sense of um, not feeling safe, then we retreat, you know what I mean? And so it's like some of those things are old behavior patterns that we've learned for protection, you know, of our own heart. And so um, it seems like you guys may both be living in that space right now, you know, in your heads both wanting it, both um, feeling it, nobody really saying a whole lot about it. Like maybe there's hints of it. I mean, you've obviously had a connection and some electric ass sex in the past. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so at some point, you know, you guys were open and, and honest with one another and had um, moments together that only you know about and shared but it's like at this time in separation it's like you both are so full of confusion and so you're mirroring each other you know it's like when one person is closed off the other become just shuts down you know or if um, there's miscommunication in some way um, then one person retreats or pulls back so how do you fix it? Spirit, what's the advice? How do they fix it? <laughs> what the shit? <laughs> How can they fix this? It would be justice served if they didn't walk away from each other. You know, karmic justice, fulfillment of the contract. Um, you know, um, clarify the eight of cups in reverse. At a crossroads about it. Um, not right now, no communication, not showing any kind of love, um, not sure which way to go, the bottom of the deck, five of cups, feeling left out in the cold in some way, um, clarify the two of wands. Feeling like um, too much conflict, chaos, and confusion um, in the situation. But you want to take a leap of faith, you know? You want to take a leap of faith and be successful. And be stable and committed to each other. 
It's like a burden on your back when you guys are apart. So you want the strength, you know, the strength and the courage to come forward to each other, to let each other know how you truly feel. Um, that reconciliation, because this is a past soulmate connection from past lives ago. And you're afraid. Because you know that the Ten of Pentacles is on the line. You know, the everything, the legacy, the um, fulfillment, the love, the happiness, the stability, the, um, the everything is on the line. You want to send a message of love, or they do. Maybe an apology. Maybe you both owe each other apologies. The twin flame connections, you guys mirror each other. So believe me, um, you both probably owe each other apologies in many different ways. You know, it's like um, sometimes we, we can like, when we have such a divine connection come into our life, okay? It's like um, there's a whole lot of shit that goes on that elevates us. Um, opens up our heart space, all this crazy shit starts happening. So the, the, the thing that's wonderful is that you're just like, wow, like I've met, like this is way too good to be true. And so you run, you know, in the other direction or you, you know, all your worries and fears about losing something so wonderful that you finally found that creates like um, this self-sabotaging behavior of like, I need to do I just need to get out of this because it's better if I end it now. You know what I mean? And so then you run. And like, I mean, it's just like, um, it's like it brings up all of those pieces of us from past relationships, past lives, past karma, um, learned behaviors, um, belief systems, you know, how, whatever it is. All those things within us that need healed or fixed or tweaked in some way because that's what this connection is for is to heal us you know to um evolve us to ascend us to a higher level of ourself you know to our best possible version of ourselves and so so yeah twin flame connections are never ever easy they don't always come together because they're complicated you know and um, it's about whether or not everybody puts in the work, you know? How bad do you want it? How bad do you miss it, you know? Um, how bad is it? I don't know. <laughs> like, trying to find that kind of connection in someone else is impossible. And so it gets very frustrating because... Um, you now have met your connected soul <laughs> and they exist in this life. And if you're not with them, you feel a sense of um, loss um, no matter what. Like no matter how you try to fill that void, it's there, you know. And um, because now, now you and your counterpart are aware that you exist on this earth. <laughs> and so you're... Um, you know, you're pulled to one another no matter what. It doesn't matter what happens. Like, you could have the most shit things go on between you and literally feel a tug at them the next day. You know what I mean? It's like, um, it's unconditional love. That's also why it can get super toxic. And that's why cycles have to break. You know, the pattern of bad behavior has to end. Um, in order for there to be any kind of evolution or union of this couple because um, the healing has to take place before you can actually come together um, in the right way, you know? <sighs> That's a lot. So I'm going to pull some naughty and nice. See what we got. Pull a couple. The 
this feeling got me this feeling got me hot wet or hard aching and needing you apparently this is a naughty message warning oops too late okay this feeling got me hot wet or hard aching and needing you in case you didn't hear it the first time okay I meet with you in my dreams every night. Jesus. Warning. <laughs> Naughty message. Coming up. Hot. Okay. Shut up and enter me. Ooh. I mean. Get down to business, yo. Your lips. Those eyes. Your heat, that pressure. Lots of naughty. Who's naughty in this connection? I think both. I don't know. I mean, I'm feeling both. Okay. We all make mistakes, all of us. Why would you think for a moment you couldn't earn forgiveness? <laughs> I can't. I need a little bit of you in me. Just the tip. I dare you. All right. All right. Lifting up the vibe in this joint. All right. Let's get some music. Because music is always good. We'll give one and one. One from Divine Masculine to Divine Feminine. One from Divine Feminine to Divine Masculine. Okay. Divine Masculine Divine Feminine song. What is it? Woo. <sighs> Flights will guide you home and ignite your bones, and I will try to fix you. Fix you by Coldplay. One song from Divine Feminine to Divine Masculine. <laughs> There are days every now and again, I pretend I'm okay, but that's not what gets me. What hurts the most was being so close. And that's Rascal Flats. What hurts the most, I think is the name of the song. I never meant to cause you any trouble. I never meant to cause you any pain. I only wanted to see you one time laughing. I only wanted to see you laughing in the purple rain. Don't lie to me. Tell me where did you sleep last night? Nirvana. You've got your ball. You've got your chain tied to me tight. Tie me up again. Your heart is unattainable, even though God knows you have mine. Sam Smith, not the only one. I set fire to the rain and threw us into the flames, and it burned when I cried because I knew it's the last time. Well, we got more than one. Anyways, that's enough songs. I'm over the songs. <laughs> they just made me sad. Okay. So, um, that's it. That's your story. So, um, I hope that helped a little bit on your journey. Um, Stay tuned for more messages like this. We're going to come up with some creative little things for fun. So, um, yeah, that's it. I'll be talking to you guys soon. Have a great night. Bye for now.